A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. This is Financial Markets, and I am Anthony to give you a little bit of what is going on in the financial markets world. This is Smart 24 TV, and on Smart 24 TV, we say we drive business in East Africa, the best here in Kampala, Uganda, Plot 42, Nile Avenue. Now, today, very interestingly, is the 29th day of November, the very second last day of the month, and uh, we are winding down the year. Lots of news is coming in, and um, one of the things that have been trending on the financial markets in East Africa have been, the, the, of course, the huge number of profit warnings. Especially these coming in from Kenya. We're going to be discussing some of those. We'll also be looking at uh, the Capital Markets Authority uh, bulletin uh, for the third quarter of 2023. What is in there for you as a trader, as an interested uh, party in the financial markets of Uganda? Well, you can catch us right now live on our YouTube channel. That is at Smart24 TV Live and you will be able to uh, get a little bit of updates there. You will also get to give us feedback through our Twitter handle, that is at Matt24TV now. That is exactly how we can be able to interact. Uh, but kicking off the short, let's start with the Uganda Securities Exchange. Having a look at what happened on the 27th of October, of, of November, rather, on the 28th of November, that was on Tuesday. At the end of today's Trading station, we had at least over about 656,000 and of course 568 shares that were traded on the Uganda Securities Exchange. Uganda Securities Exchange boasts now of a market, a market capitalization of at least 16.2 trillion Ugandan shillings. And uh, uh, as per yesterday's close of trade, we had at least 51,000, 51 million uh, Ugandan shillings traded in turn over. Now, comparing the Tuesday trade to the Monday trading, uh, Tuesday showed at least an improvement of 227% in the volume and 18% a decline was registered in the turnover. The twist uh, within the turnover and the volumes comes as a result of the fact that uh, one of the biggest, uh, when you look at the biggest traders here, it was Standard Bank Uganda, which traded at least 438,000 shares. Now, when you look at uh, the, the current market price for Stanbit closing off uh, the Tuesday trade, we had at least 32.18 Ugandan shares. Now, that, in contrast, gives you a picture of uh, why we have these uh, volumes going up, yet the turnover is still quite low for the stocks, because the biggest trader has a quite smaller price compared to when we would have, for example, MTN Uganda as the biggest trader, because MTN has a quite higher price. MTN currently trades at 172.09 Ugandan shillings. And interestingly, it was one of the gainers uh, yesterday with a traded volume of at least 211,350 shares. Now, looking at the aggregate performance, we had at least, on average, four equities that participated in the trade, uh, which is what we usually have. Uh, the highest I've seen, at least this year, is about six stocks on a single day trading. Uh, but yesterday, we had four stocks trade, ending the day with six gainers and three losers. East African Breweries Limited led the gainers with a 0.86% appreciation in price, uh, closing off the day at uh, 2,865 Ugandan shillings per share. Uh, Centum Investments also followed suit with a gain of at least 0.44%, and that was up to at least 211.38. MTN Uganda also added 0.33%, up to a price of 172.09 Ugandan shillings. Equity Bank Limited at least also appreciated by 0.2%, up to a price of 950.22 Ugandan shillings. National Media Group as well appreciated by 0.2%, up to 496.2 Ugandan shillings. Kenya Airways appreciated 0.2%, up to 95.02 Ugandan shillings. Those were the top gainers. Very, very uh, good movement there. 
for the top gainers. And as a result of these big gainers uh, on the market, we had um, the performance of the indices actually as well improve uh, with the OSHA index improving by 0.61 points. Now, this was to close off at 907.72 uh, points. That is of as per the close of trading yesterday. Now, for the one-week performance of the all-share index, it's still on a one-week gain of 0.49% and a four-week loss of 2.4%, and yet an overall year-to-date uh, loss of at least 25.14%. Meaning, in the short term, the stocks have been performing quite well, looking at, at least from the perspective of the all share index, uh, with a weekly gain of 0.49%. And uh, when you look at the four week loss or the four week performance, there's been a drop of at least 2.4%. And yet, even the overall year to date performance has also declined significantly by 25.14%. Now, that indicates that there's still a lot more work to do uh, in as far as the year to date is concerned as we wind down the year. We're going to be looking at the statistics from the Capital Markets Authority as well, uh, how they have actually valued the performance of the third quarter. The third quarter starts from a period of um, at least July, if I'm not mistaken, July, August, September. Yes, all the way to September. And then the last quarter or the final lap for the year is, of course, uh, uh, the the month of October, the month of November, and the month of December, where we are currently. So let's uh, get to, first of all, look at the bottom losers before moving into the details here from the Capital Markets Authority. Uh, the bottom losers included KCB, Jubilee Holdings, Limited, and Stanbic Bank Uganda. KCB came at the bottom with the 2.01% uh, depreciation in price. And this was down to a price of 493.72. Now, KCB Bank is among the most highest uh, value dividend issuer issuers in the Kenyan market. And as we're going to see from uh, the third quarter report of the different um, of the different capital markets, when you look at uh, what they have, uh, at least for the first the third, first, second, and third quarter, KCB has been really uh, ranked very, very highly up there. When you look at the third quarter earnings, there has been a lot really uh, that KCB has had to put on the table, as we are going to see very, very briefly. Uh, when, when, the banking, when you look at the banking sector in Kenya, um, there's been a lot of uh, struggle for most of the banks there. And uh, one of the one of the one of the reasons why we have had some of these struggles is because of macroeconomic factors, inflation, the forex, and of course uh, some of the uh, uh, external factors, including Russia-Ukrainian invasion and the Israeli war. However, for KCB Bank, they have at least tried as much as possible uh, to keep it up in terms of the uh, dividends that they have been issuing, even in the third quarter of the year. We're going to be looking at those details very, very shortly. Jubilee Holdings Limited lost at least 1.84%, uh, down to a price of 4,465.80 Ugandan shillings. And Stanbic Bank Uganda lost at least 1.14% down to 32.18 Ugandan shillings. That's at least a little bit of what we are having on the market currently as per the trading uh, that is happening uh, in the Uganda Securities Exchange. Well, still looking at the top movers, I mentioned earlier uh, Stanbic Bank Uganda led the top movers with the highest volume at least 438,000 shares were traded. And uh, this was followed suit by the MTN stock with at least 211,350 shares. Uganda Craze with 5,008. And then Umeme with 1,300 shares that have been traded. Well, let's get to look at some of the detailed performances here from uh, the quarterly bulletin of the Capital Markets Authority. Uh, the Capital Markets Authority is uh, the managing or the regulator of the financial markets 
for capital markets in East in Uganda, and they produce a quarterly bulletin as per the statistics uh, that have been produced from the different entities that are involved in the financial markets, including the Uganda Securities Exchange. So we are going to have a look at some of their uh, what, what their predictions are, what uh, they have be actually discovered from the third quarter, and if there could be any any areas of improvement. Now, uh, according to the bulletin, looking at the Uganda Securities Exchange, uh, the equity market performance here, the total market capitalization of the Uganda Securities Exchange generally in the third quarter fell at least um, by 8.2%. Uh, to at least 16.2 trillion Ugandan shillings at the end of the review period. This was compared to at least 17.7 trillion at the end of June 2023. And this decline was attributed to the decrease in market capitalization observed on five cross-counted stocks. Now, this is this cross-listed counters. When you look at uh, Centum, East African Breweries Limited, Equity Bank Limited, Jubilee Holdings, and KCB, they have been the main, uh, the main, the main losers, generally from the third quarter. And uh, we had also some local stocks that really hampered with the market capitalization. Uh, these were five locally listed equities, including uh, the Bank of Baroda, Uganda Sipla, QCIL. Uh, we had also DSU Bank, Uganda Clays, and Umeme. On an annualized basis, the total market capitalization dropped by 25% from 21.7 trillion during the period, uh, the same period in 2022. Uh, this decline can be attributed to the decrease in market capitalization still of seven cost listings as well as four locally listed stocks, including MTN, NIC, uh, the Uganda Clay Stock, and DFCU Bank. Now, when you look at the quarterly trends in total market capitalization, uh, the highest market capitalization we've ever had on the exchange, at least for the past five years, was in 2019. This was in the fourth quarter, where we hit 24.99 trillion. And now currently we are standing at 16.2 trillion. And I think as per this graph on my screen, we are looking at the lowest ever market capitalization at least for that review period, between 2019 third quarter and 2023 third quarter. We're looking at the lowest market capitalization. That means a lot for the exchange. But however, remember these statistics here are for the third quarter of 2023. Just recently, we had Airtel Uganda among some of the listed stocks now, uh, coming out with the initial public offer and raising the market capitalization right now to the current if you look at today as per the close we have a 16.2 trillion market capitalization that is exactly what is happening on the exchange Airtel uganda hasn't traded any shares on the secondary market so far and their price has been at 100.0 shillings since ever since they listed on the exchange uh, that was uh, early in the middle of this month 20 in november 2023 Moving on further with the domestic market capitalization, the domestic market capitalization representing the value of locally listed stocks experienced a growth of 2.5% from 7.3 trillion in June 2023 to at least 7.5 trillion in the review period. Now, the growth is attributed mainly to the increase in market capitalization of two entities, and that is Sunbeak Bank Uganda, which has appreciated by 19.2%, and NIC, or National Insurance Corporation, which has also gone up by 3.6%. The changes in domestic market capitalization mirror the changes in price of the domestic counters as discussed in this quarterly bulletin. Uh, when, an, when annualized, the domestic market capitalization has even increased further by 5.2% from at least 7.1 trillion uh, to 7.2 trillion. Uh, that is comparing with last year, exactly last year within the third quarter. This growth can be attributed to the rise in market capitalization of mainly three stocks. Umeme, uh, Standard Bank Uganda, and the Bank of Baroda, Uganda.
that is what we can say when you look at the the, the statistics here are quite many uh, we might not go through all of them but the us eo share index also experienced a decrease of 8.2 percent whereas the um when you look at the local company index it experienced a gain on the other hand 2.5 percent generally the markets improve uh, with the improvement in performance of the local stocks first because the local stocks are the most active number two they have at least um, the, the stocks are quite tradable uh, first of all they are affordable and then they are also uh, much more uh, into dividend issuance and they're more understood generally by the local retail investors even the international investors really have interest in some of our domestically listed stocks so there's a lot uh, that they have done to improve the market and they have the greatest influence on the market currently well uh, that's it from the uh, uganda securities exchange currently uh, you can find more on our website at smart 24 tv for your latest updates or as you're watching right now those figures that are just passing be behind the squeeze back there you can be able to actually follow up with what is the current pricing of the different stocks and all the information that you might need to know uh, that is uh, for the fact uh, moving across to uh, nairobi securities exchange there have been uh, profit warnings at the Kenyan Boas. Uh, and they are, the number has risen to nine uh, stocks that have issued profit warnings currently on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Crown Paints and WPP Scan Group are the latest listed companies to issue profit warnings to their investors, bringing to the number to nine. And uh, this is uh, anticipated. This, uh, this is the companies that are anticipating low earnings this year other companies that actually have issued a lot of warnings uh, since March are Longhorn Publishers, Sapini, uh, we had also Car and General as well as Nation Media Group, Centum Investment and Unga Group as well as Kenya Power and Lighting Company. Now most of the notices which could have an impact on dividends are attributed to the tough operating environment, including the high costs of doing business in Kenya. Uh, WPP Scan Group uh, says its undertaking of restructuring, which involved uh, the firing of its staff, also cost the company uh, severance costs of at least 178 million Kenyan shillings, with about 1.16 million US dollars in operating and administrative expenses the reason of all the lower expected earnings is due in 2023 could also be due to a quite a number of reasons including the continued subdued economic activity in the kenyan market uh, for operating businesses uh, that has led to uh, cautious spending by clients and uh, especially on advertising and marketing as well as communications when companies are facing challenges especially to do with um you know they the way they are doing business or their operating costs they find a way and sometimes the way the only way they have is to cut on the expenditure and sometimes this includes maybe getting to fire some people which goes into several costs that for example wpp scan has actually had to undergo scan group reported uh, that they had a net profit of 75.2 million Kenyan shillings, which is about 491,000 US dollars in 2022, from a loss of 37.9 million Kenyan shillings registered in 2021. And it expects that its profits most, um, that at most a profit of 56.4 million shillings will be uh, witnessed at the end of December 2023. Now you picture that uh, a net profit of 75 million in 2022 uh, from a loss in the previous year that was at least 37.9, which was a very good, a very good move and very promising, uh, very promising uh, performance. However, they're expecting now a profit, a maximum profit of 56.4 million Kenyan shillings, way lower than what they had last year. Crown Paints Kenya also posted. Uh, at least a 4.7 percent rise in the profit to an 824 million uh, Kenyan shillings for the year ended uh, 2022 
by driven by higher revenues now uh, the paint manufacturer crown paints issued a warning anticipating a profit decline of at least 25 percent in the current financial year ending uh, in the next month this indicates uh, it is expecting a maximum of 618 million kenyan shillings in uh, the period from 824 million shillings all these have an impact and like we're going to look at the market uh, today as they are trading such news is very critical for the performance of the company in terms of stocks uh, the drop in uh, the crown paints kenya group according to uh, the crown paints notice they say that the group's performance is mainly attributed to the increased cost of raw material and um, they, they also say it can be attributed to the increased transport costs the volatility in exchange rate and the slowdown in economic activities in the year now when you look at other firms on the kenyan market diversified trading firm car and general issued a profit warning as well at the start of the month of november uh, for the 15th month uh, ending 2023 uh, preparing investors for earnings declines of at least 25 percent citing a combination of factors that affected the company including a foreign exchange loss uh, on dollars exposures and uh, the deterioration of unit economics of motorcycles which had their sales in kenya and demerage costs in tanzania as well that is very critical news coming in from nairobi and i wanted to bring that out before we get to look at the performance so we could have a little bit of rationale for what is happening on the nairobi boards at the moment now nairobi securities exchange currently has 66 stocks that are listed on the kenyan market and uh, among us these we have quite a number of small and medium enterprises uh, growth enterprise market segment listed and then we have a number of uh, big conglomerate conglomerate companies and uh, international bodies that are listed as well as the demutualized nairobi securities exchange company which is also listed on the bus we're going to be looking at this performance uh, when we get back but before we go into the break i just wanted to remind you that um, when you look at uh, the time right now it's 10 22 and uh, this is trading time uh, trading in uganda starts at 9 a.m and closes at 1 p.m east african standard time uh, you can reach out to any of your stock brokers and uh, you can start your journey of trading you can trade among the 18 stocks that are listed you can trade with your uh, ussd code using mtn or airtel uh, by simply dialing star 165 star 57 hash you can open an account very easy very quick and you will be able to invest with uh, the uganda securities exchange well we are still looking into some of the trending stories and what is happening but we're going to very briefly look at uh, the kenyan market when we return from our short break and uh, as we go into the break remember also uh, to go on twitter and uh, follow the hashtag financial markets and uh, follow smart 24 tv and you will be able to look at the updates as they unfold uh, on our different social media platforms smart 24 tv drives business and this is financial market my name is anthony we return shortly after this quick break up Smart 24, driving business. Cooking oil like no other makes your meal so sweet and scrumptious. The taste of Uganda.
Ugandans come to Ginger City every weekend. And December 16th, 2023 is Uganda's end of year party as Smart FM hosts the Smart Swag Fest Season 2. Don't miss performances from Uganda's top DJs, MCs and artists like the King herself, Cindy Baby, in her full band, Think for Maker, UG Boys, Kesmon Switch, King Zamba, Waymake Official, Voice Nancy, Zach Tom Rizzo, Lance Soldier and many more local artists. Let's meet at the chairman's back next to Ginger Showgrounds. Get your early bird tickets now at 15k and at the gate 20k. Gets open from 10 a.m. till late. The Smart Swag Fest is organized by 89 Smart FM and Hot Shots. Powered by Smart 24 TV, CSAN Suits, NBS Cordeo, GZ Mechatronics, Ginger Hippos, Kampala University, Albeit Electronics and Solar Center, TMU Tubing and Rafting, Banji Uganda, Quad Biking. Ginger Cable Giants, Start on Visions and Audio, Bidco, and Club. Tastefully different, not for sale to persons under 18. Smart 24, driving business. Welcome back and thank you for still remaining with us at Smart 24 TV. This is Financial Market. I'm Anthony, your host currently, and uh, you're still watching uh, the number one show when it comes to business. Well, we've been still looking into the Kenyan market and uh, as per the trading day on Tuesday, 28th of November, at least over about uh, 16,000 16, 16 million shares were traded on the Kenyan market with 223 million Kenyan shillings market turnovers. Uh, compared with the previous NSE trading day, at least over 89% uh, improvements were registered in the volume and 156% improvements in the turnover. The current market capitalization for the exchange is one point. 5 trillion Ugandan shil Kenyan shillings. In aggregate, over 42 listed equities out of the 66 uh, listed equities ended the day with 11 gainers and 15 losers on the market. And current general Kenya led the gainers with 8.91% appreciation in price, closing at 25.05 Kenyan shillings. And uh, when you look at Olympia Capital Holdings, it gained 7.14%. And Standard Bank Group uh, had at least 6.36%, whereas Safaricom appreciated by 4.09%. Well, interestingly, Safaricom has uh, been uh, in a series of losses, uh, but 
currently is one of the top gainers, which is interesting here on the Uganda Nairobi Securities Exchange. The Paricom dates way back in 2008, on the 9th of June, when it got listed on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And it is identified by the sticker symbol, SCOM, and as by the international securities identification number, they go by 1402. Now, Safaricom currently is the most valuable company on the Nairobi Securities Exchange, and this is uh, as per the statistics currently, with a 561 billion Kenyan shillings market capitalization, which represents about 38.7% of the entire Nairobi Securities Exchange equity market. Now, Safaricom uh, yesterday closed at a price of 14 shillings with a gain of 0.55. Uh, Kenyan shillings after a gain of 4.09 percent and uh, when you look at their trend currently there has been a downward slope for their price due to a number of factors uh, their increased uh, expenditure or capex capital expenditure after acquiring at least after selling off their some bit of their shares into the Safaricom Ethiopia branch which has uh, been a massive investment for the company and quite a number of other factors that we've already mentioned that are due to macroeconomic environment conditions. Uh, Safaricom has at least 13.3 million traded shares as per yesterday with a 186 million Kenyan shillings turnover. Market capitalization, like I said, currently stands at 561 billion, uh, billion Kenyan shillings. Uh, Safaricom in the last also three months has recorded a trade of at least 498 million shares, valued at 6.87 billion Kenyan shillings over the period, with an average of 7.9 million shares that have been traded per trading station. A volume high of 72.1 million has been achieved as per the 27th of October, and a low of 219,000 has been achieved on the 24th of November for the same period. That is as per the statistics for the Nairobi Securities Exchange, the Paricom stock. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the companies that have been losing on the Kenyan market have been influenced mainly that by the ongoing news of the profit warnings. Nine companies so far have issued profit warnings and these have included um, the Crown Paints Company, a painting company there. Uh, we did also have Scan Group as well, uh, among us the profit warnings issuers. And the performance really does reveal some of the uh, news that is going around. For example, Scan Group yesterday lost a value of 3.59% and closed off at a trading volume, at a trading value of 2.15 Kenyan shillings. And when you look at Scan Group currently, it's engaged in the business of uh, developing communication strategies, uh, creating ad advertisements for products and services, planning and buying media, as well as providing uh, marketing consultancy. The activities of the company include media investment, management, branding, creative advertising, public relations, experiential marketing as well as integrated digital marketing and field marketing as well these are quite competitive sectors to be dealing in and for a company like scan group uh, they have faced it uh, on the rough side currently it is the 44th most valuable meaning it's not on the high-end companies that have a big big market capitalizations but it's on the lower end and uh, at 929 million kenyan shillings worth of market capitalization the company it represents about just 0.064 percent less than uh, at least a half a half percent of the entire equity market in nairobi scan group traded 20,200 shares valued at 43,430 kenyan shillings and uh, market capitalization still maintained at 929 million kenyan shillings that is uh, what we're seeing here on the Nairobi Boise. Now, uh, this is exactly why uh, these profit warnings are very, very vital for an exchange. And um, unless the market environment improves, foreign exchange losses as well go down, we are likely to see more of these in Kenya at the moment. And another report from uh, the Kenyan market that we've been seeing making rounds is that uh, the qu a quarter of the NSC-listed firms 
are also having a negative working capital. Now, about only uh, about one quarter of the entire Nairobi Securities Exchange uh, board are facing financial constraints, which may require fresh capital to sustain operations and dividend payment to shareholders. The worrying state of affairs demonstrates uh, the extent of the battering that the listed firms have borne in the hands of ongoing economic crisis and uh, investors' seemingly lack of interest in the stocks as a result of economic um, our crisis and uh, depleted disposable incomes, as well as emergency of alternative uh, investment options such as the real estate and private equity. Now, these are compiled uh, by the uh, daily, uh, the daily there in Kenya for the year ended 31st December 2022. It shows that 14 out of 57 firms have, uh, for firms actively trading are actively trading on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Uh, boards which are battling with negative working capital positions in which current assets have fallen short of current liabilities. The data obtained from the audited financial statements of listed firms uh, excluded uh, the Sugar Miller Mumias, and uh, which is a receivership, and the ARM, which is under liquidation, as well as Deacon's East Africa, which is under administration, and Wuchumi Supermarket, which is also undergoing a court-backed voluntary arrangement plan with creditors. Last year, Wuchumi acknowledged through its company voluntary arrangement uh, status report for June that it was facing numerous challenges that have hindered the implementation of the plan, setting the stage for liquidation at the moment. Uh, when you look at the operating ecosystem still of um, uh, different companies in Kenya, there has been neg negative working capital. Now, uh, maybe to just give you a rephrase, when you look at negative working capital, this refers to um, the means, the, uh, the, it means that the firms that are listed are wallowing in a precarious a cash flow position in which they lack cash and, of course, cash equivalents that will finance day to day operations and meet short term obligations of up to uh, one year. So, in other words, it's like you earning a salary or uh, working or a certain wage, and uh, when you stop working, you cannot sustain yourself for the next one year. That is what we call the negative working capital. So, uh, the Capital Markets Authority says the severity of each firm's financial situation depends on the sector. Which sectors are, de uh, are, are also dependent on how the government is viewing those sectors or how the macroeconomic conditions are favoring or not favoring those particular sectors. Now, uh, since companies in the manufacturing and industrial sectors, they, they, they often bear uh, the, band, the brand, especially of the negative working capital. That is what we're seeing currently on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And uh, to be honest, uh, the environment has been very hostile for Kenyan companies. If you have followed through the different reports from the Central Bank of Kenya regarding inflation in Kenya, there's been a lot of hostility of, uh, for the economic environment in Kenya. Um, everybody is feeling it, even at the individual level. Um, trust me, this is even according to some the, some of the big names in the Kenyan capital markets, like the chief executive of the CMA, Mr. Wycliffe Shamia. Uh, now, if people don't have money, this is a, this is an issue that most people don't understand. If people don't have money in their pockets, you find that even the companies that uh, depend on them, uh, we'll start struggling. And that's why uh, this, this, this pull, pull and push for, from either ends. Because as a company struggles, it means people that are supposed to be contributing to this company's growth are not having the money to, to spend in these uh, companies. Now, let's look at the working capital index. According to audited financial statements, the 14 firms with a negative working capital are in especially sectors of automobiles and accessories, uh, commercial and services, uh, construction and allied uh, energy and petroleum, uh, inter investment services, investment and allied sectors. The CMA is aware that of the financial state of several companies, and it is in constant discussions with the boards 
and management of the affected companies of trying to come up with workable plans to address the financial shortfalls that are currently facing the company. According to the regulator, the working capital is in fact uh, not a good indicator of the financial health of the company because uh, some companies could lack short-term uh, funds, but most of them, uh, of their cash is tied up in long-term assets as well. Working capital is not a good indicator as, as per at least uh, some financial analysts because it looks at the health of uh, the health of the company from the perspective of how much do you have in the short term. That is the one year. How much can you spend? But some companies really have assets that are long term, like a real estate, land. These are, these are long term investments that you don't expect to actually yield more in the short term. In certain sectors, when you have a negative working capital, it means that you're struggling. Well, in some sectors, it can be a problem when you go beyond a certain level. Uh, well, in other sectors, it's not a problem at all, according to Mr. Shamia, the CMA Chief Executive Officer of Kenya. As a result, the regulator is reviewing listing regulations to expand financial indicators of the listed firms beyond the working capital in various sectors. The current regulations only require listed firms to have sufficient working capital without detailing the quantum at the moment. Uh, CMA is reviewing the public offers listing and disclosures regulations with a view of at least increasing and retaining listings at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Support uh, capital raising by small and medium enterprises and enhance investor protection as well. When you look at the Boaz ownership, the Kenyan Nairobi Securities Exchange, um, the draft regulations are no, aim at, at establishing a fair, efficient, and transparent capital markets by encouraging and promoting timely and accurate disclosure of information to investors. They also provide promoting. Uh, for, uh, they also provide for promoting investor protection as well as improved investor confidence in the capital market. Now, last year, um, the Nairobi Securities Exchange Public Limited Company uh, self-listed in 2014, uh, which recorded at least 89% decline in net profits uh, to 13.72 million Kenyan shillings from 132.53 million Kenyan shillings in 2021. When you look at the Nairobi Securities Exchange All Share Index, it also declined by 11.9%. It settled down at 1,676 points uh, from 1,902 points in the same period in 2021. NSE demutualized and self-listed in 2014, allowing the public to own shares in the company that was previously wholly owned by trading intermediaries or stock brokers. However, many of the stock brokers and investment as banks which after listing each held a stake of 2.7% in the Boaz, have since sold their shares either fully or in part. The Boaz is currently majority owned 50.01% by uh, foreign investors, with stockbrokers owning a paltry of 17% stake. Uh, that's a developing story from uh, Kenya Nairobi Securities Exchange. And very interestingly, one of the things that sticks out is that investors will always have options. There are always options. There's a real estate investment, there's private equity, and the famously uh, the most popular now, the unit trust fund. Those are always the options that are available for investors when it comes to trading on uh, different uh, you know, entities. Now, let's turn our eyes to the Ugandan market slightly before we move forward. When you look at uh, the Unit Trust Fund, one of the outstanding, the most outstanding fund managers has been UAP Old Mutual, uh, UAP. Uh, actually, now it changed them from UAP to Old Mutual Umbrella Trust Fund. Now, the Old Mutual Umbrella Trust Fund or the Unit Trust Edition uh, has had exceptional performance and um, this year, uh, they, they, they're going to be able to announce the interest rate. But as for last year, they almost had a payout of 100 billion in interest income in 2022 alone. This year, they are on track to be uh, to close at least at 150 billion Ugandan shillings plus an interest income to their uh, in clients. 
When it comes to unit trust fund investments in Uganda, the European mutual trust fund turns out as the largest asset under management firm. It has the largest AUM, or the asset under management, totaling close to 1.6 trillion, and an beatable return of about 11.5%, consistently delivered to clients year after year. Their interest rates have been at least above 11.5%. But what makes UAP Old Mutual, or now the new, or with its name, the, the Old Mutual Trust Fund, very exceptional? Let's have the details here. The fund has experienced remarkable growth over the past year and over the past two years, expanding from at least around $545 billion in September 2021 to $1.6 trillion. That's almost thrice. Imagine a growth of over a hundred billion, or rather, yes, a hundred billion from in just a space of two years. And now currently, it has 1.6 trillion, and they have tripled their assets under management in just over 24 months, while consistently paying out around 11% interest income uh, to their clients. The fund growth timelines, when you look at the fund growth timelines, we have at least 545 billion in 2021 September. In 2021, 2022 September, we had at least 988 billion Ugandan shillings. And then in December 2022, we had 1.09 trillion Ugandan shillings. And then last year, or this year, September 2023, over 1.6 trillion. I will definitely get these guys on the show to let us know how they do this. And uh, if you don't know about the unit trust or how it really, really works, it's very simple. You have a couple of investors coming together uh, under an umbrella fund or under a fund manager. The fund manager does the playing for you and the investing. And all you wait for is a return, which is on an annual rate. And an average nowadays is at 11%. With UAP or Mutual having the highest interest rates currently at 11, over 11.5% 11 at the moment. All these are some of the strategies that have, uh, you know, enabled investors to actually invest in financial markets. Because previously we had issues with uh, investor education without uh, investor, investors lacking enough knowledge and literacy to do the trading themselves. Well, the unit trust fund gets rid of all that and they invest in all these um, different asset classes, the treasury bonds, treasury bills, the stock markets and so on, and all you wait for is your return. Now, interestingly, the unit trust also has an option of withdrawing your money whenever you want to. Of course, there's a, there's a span and there are conditions to it, but still, it's pretty much easier than any other investment that you can think of. So the liquidity is un, uh, unheard of. It's, 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 it's really convenient, and it's, it's so easy to use, so easy to understand. And this is why uh, these assets have become very, very famous. Now, with this ex exceptional performance, UAP Old Mutual is estimated to have paid out a total of over 100 billion in, in interest income in 2022. And this year, they are on the track to paying out at least uh, 150 billion plus in interest income in their, to their clients. Uh, now, even small investments yield significant returns. Uh, some, uh, even, uh, for example, for let me put it in perspective here for our viewers. Uh, for you to gain from a unit trust, it's not necessarily about how much you're investing. Even the smallest investments can issue you returns. Let's have a look, for example. For an average input over, or an average saving of about $5 million on average last year, I'm just looking at last year's interest income, it earned you 550,000 Ugandan shillings for the year how much did you earn on for example how much did you earn on your money that you're keeping in the savings a commercial uh, a bank account how much did you earn if you had five million right now last year by if you've been if you've been keeping with the fund for the whole year for over five million you're going to have a return of at least um you're going to have a return of 550,000. So the question here UAP is asking is how much have you earned from your how much have you earned from your uh, your your savings in the bank or your your account your commercial bank account? 
Is how, how much? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. So let's see what the UAP Old Mutual Fund invests in. The fund has significant exposure to governments of Uganda, with over 78% of their total assets under management invested in government bonds, or around 1.2 trillion uh, Ugandan shillings. That's the, the biggest part. Uh, the next part is the fixed deposits. These are to commercial banks. And then you're looking at the next part, which is um, you're looking at uh, corporate paper, treasury bills, and cash and coal. Unit trust funds in Uganda present an attractive investment opportunity, offering competitive returns while maintaining accessibility to your funds. If you're seeking alternative investment avenues, consider incorporating unit trusts into your portfolio. Yeah, we, we, of course, you'll be profiling one unit trust every week. And so we will be giving you at least some of the oldest and uh, the newest technology, what's happening in strength, uh, that are happening currently in the market when it comes to unit trust funds and uh, that's right about it and uh, thank you so much for still remaining with us uh, thus far and thank you for watching smart 24 tv smart 24 tv can be found on channels 372 dstv and channel 302 go tv and you can be part of uh, the magic by simply also going to our youtube channel that is at smart 24 tv uh, live and you can participate in some of those very interesting conversations that we always hold. My name is Anthony. I was very glad that you joined me this morning. I'll catch you tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a good day. Bye for now.